Hello. The topic of this video will be the fascial layers of the neck. So we're just going to draw the layers of the neck one by one from outside to in and sort of build up um, the neck from bottom up. And along the way, we'll talk about the muscles and important vascular structures that are part of each compartment created by these fascial layers. So the very outside of the neck, which I'll just draw as this big circle, is going to be the uh, superior, su superficial cervical fascia. Superficial cervical fascia. And all you really need to know is that this layer has the platysma muscle, which is one of the muscles of facial expression re responsible for grimacing. Next up, we have the um, investing layer of the deep fascia. which I'll draw with two pairs of muscles in the front and the back. So this is the investing layer. And notably here you have the sternocleidal mastoid and the trapezius. Your SCM is right here and your trapezius is right here. Um, your SCM is anterior and your trapezius is posterior. So I'll just write anterior posterior, so we're fur further oriented in the future. Okay, and um, next we have the pretracheal layer. So that's going to be this C-shaped structure here. Um, so the... Uh, Pretracheal layer it has two portions actually, a visceral and a muscular portion. The visceral portion surrounds the thyroid glands and the trachea and esophagus. So this is the visceral part. And then directly anterior to the visceral portion of the pretracheal fascia is a muscular layer, which I'll just put here. So this is the pretracheal uh, muscular portion. And the muscular portion of the pretracheal fascia has the infrahyoid muscles. So we'll just make a note of that. As for the um, visceral layer, we already said that it has the thyroid, esophagus, and trachea. Specifically, um, this would be the thyroid right here, and the uh, trachea and esophagus is going to be in this pocket down here. The larger circle that I'm drawing is the trachea, which is anterior to the smaller compressible um, structure of the esophagus. And then I just want to make a note that the um, layer of fascia in the very posterior aspect of the pretracheal layer here is actually called the buccal pharyngeal fascia, and that'll become important later. So just know this is buccal pharyngeal. Okay, um, and then the next thing we want to talk about is the prevertebral fascia. So um, there's going to be a large region back here which houses the vertebra, and enclosing it is going to be the prevertebral fascia. Make sense? Next, we're going to talk about the, um, the carotid sheath, which houses some very important vascular structures. So the carotid sheaths actually connect the pretracheal and prevertebral pre fascias. They completely bridge and span these two compartments. So we'll just call these our carotid sheaths. We have one on each side and they uh, convey some very important vascular structures. So first of all, the uh, common carotid artery, the jugular, the 
uh, 10th cranial nerve as well as the lymph nodes. And we'll draw all those structures. Um, the most lateral structure in the anterior portion of the carotid sheath is going to be the jugular vein. And then more medial to it is going to be the common carotid, which makes sense because in general arteries are more interior than veins um, when talking about the, the body. Uh, arteries need to be further away from the superficial layers of the skin because a rupture of an artery is a lot worse than the rupture of a vein. So medially we have um, the common carotid and then posteriorly to both the jugular and common carotid we have the uh, vagus nerve CN10. So this is going to be the same for each side. Okay, and the last fascia that I want to talk about is this fascial layer that bridges the two carotid sheaths right down the middle. So this is called the alar fascia, it's just a, a thin strip. This one's notable because it divides the, this middle space here into two compartments. Anteriorly, we're going to um, create a space called the uh, retropharyngeal space. So named because it's right before the, um, the trachea and the pharynx. Um, this space is notable because it is a site of abscess development, so infections can spread here from the face. The posterior compartment formed by the alar fascia and the prevertebral fascias is called the danger space. The anatomical danger space of the neck is so named because um, it communicates directly with the thorax. So infections can take a route through the danger space and spread straight into the mediastinum, which is bad, as you might imagine. So this pretty much covers all the fascial layers of the neck as well as the important structures they convey. Thank you for tuning in.